Lovely to see you all here today and welcome to those that are watching online and welcome to any visitors and welcome to Jan back from the Antarctic and to <coughs> Stella, the daughter of Pat Best here and any other visitors that we may have. Welcome to our service. <coughs> we acknowledge that we worship on Jun Bundjalung country. <laughs> Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. When the lights are on and the house is full and laughter is easy and all is well, when the lights are low and the house is still 
and the talk is intense, and the air is full of wondering. When the lights are off, and the house is sad, and the voice is troubled, and nothing seems right. And today, always today, as if there were no other people, no other door. So the first hymn is Beauty for Brokenness. with you. Come Lord, be our guest, stay with us, bring to us your poverty. Bring to our house all those who hurry or hobble behind you. 
that we may meet you as the Saviour of all. Bring to our hearts your Holy Spirit, that we may be a cradle of love, with friend, with stranger, with neighbour, and the well-known ones, be among us always. For the doors of our hearts to open, and the doors of our hearts to leave each other. Glory be to you, great creating spirit, who shines in distant stars beyond numbering. And on earth peace. Glory be to you, great creating spirit, who sings and wings in birds on high. And on earth peace. Glory be to you, great creating spirit, whose thunder shapes the shining firmament. And on earth peace. Glory, 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 glory and, and on earth, earth peace. peace. So let us pray. Loving God, the light of minds that know you, the life of souls that love you, and the strength of hearts that serve you. Help us so to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may faithfully serve you, whose service is perfect freedom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our reading from Isaiah. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 1 to 4. But there will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time, God brought into contempt the land of Zebulun, and then the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee, and the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 to 23. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum, by the lake in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has been dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. 
Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went from there. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with his father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I'm sure you've read the bumper sticker that says, I would rather be fishing. <laughs> I respect the fact that many find fishing a relaxing pastime. <laughs> I'm very happy that that is a positive experience for them. I, on the other hand, am appalled by it. <laughs> and as the universe would have it, of course we have two sons whose second favourite hobby after surfing is... Fishing. <laughs> so I know, a t uh, I know a few things about fishing. I know more about fishing than I ever have liked to have known. But let's, let's go with it. So I'm told that the lure of fishing is enjoying the great outdoors, breathing in fresh air alongside the ocean or on riverbanks, and perhaps even relaxing with friends if you fish with others. It's quite a romantic picture, isn't it? But there is a darker side. <laughs> That's where we're getting to. <laughs> I suggest that there is a darker side to fishing. And I'm not talking about the hooks that are inadvertently left in the ocean or along the beach. And I'm not talking about fishing litter, such as gut, that is not always properly discarded, causing harm to the environment and marine life in particular. I'm referring to the fish that do not want to be caught. Because let's face it, success for the angler means death for the fish. So let's think about fishing from the perspective of the fish. So first of all, you have this sharp metal hook poked into your mouth. And as if that's not enough, you are pulled in a direction that you don't want to go by this sharp hook tearing through your mouth. Does that sound like fun? I don't think so. And then you are ripped from your home. You gasp for breath, choking slowly to death, flipping from one side to another in a spine-breaking attempt to suck in air. And and I've done this, and that feeling will never leave me. And you choke slowly to death unless you have the merciful knife pushed through your brain to end your suffering. <laughs> Fish do not want to be caught any more than humans want to be fished. Brian Blunt is a New Testament professor, has a beautiful American accent, which I won't attempt to emulate, but he says this. I hear people say all the time that they do not like direct asks for time, talent, and treasure in the church. Let's admit it. We don't like people fishing our calendar, fishing our commitment, and certainly not fishing our finances. Not the IRS, remember, it's America. Not the state, not the people on the street corners, and not the preachers in their pulpits. <laughs> Follow me, says Jesus. 
and I will make you fish for people. Fishing for people, luring people, baiting them, hooking them, netting them, dragging them out of their comfort zones to be knifed and gutted. Yet how else can we explain what Jesus did to those first disciples when they abandoned everything to follow him? If we read carefully in Matthew, Matthew reminds us of the following. First, the context. Herod has arrested John the Baptist, mentor and cousin to Jesus. Remember that John challenged Herod for colluding with Rome for his own benefit. And John criticized the toxic culture of exploitation and oppression festering in first century Judea. So we have this ominous tone of John's arrest for challenging power. Jesus withdrew to Galilee, the land of Naphtali and Zebulon. So you may be asking, why does the Gospel writer, Matthew, reference Naphtali and Zebulon, two Old Testament cities? What's their significance to Galilee in the year 30 CE? The symbol of Naphtali and Zebulon has several layers. First, the land of Galilee is occupied by the Roman powers, and Matthew dares to remind his listeners that the land belongs not to the Romans, but to God. It is not Roman land, it is Naphtali and Zebulon where the light shines. Second, the land of Zebulon and Naphtali, as you heard from the first reading, is a direct reference to Isaiah. In Isaiah, the Assyrian king, Tiglath Palacea, took the Israelites into captivity in 732 BCE. So if we just empathize with that, the Assyrian exile was terrifying. You're taken from the land you know, the land you've grown up in, and you're taken into a strange land to work as a slave. The young, and the old have been murdered in front of you. And it's a time of depression, confusion. Where is God in all of this? It's a time of dehumanization. So the gospel writer here draws parallels between the Assyrian exile and the Roman oppression. And the message is hope. For those who sit in the shadow of death, whether it is 732 BCE, 30 CE, or even 2023, a light has dawned. So it's a message of hope to look beyond the darkness. Third, Galilee is a powerful symbol. It is not Jerusalem, the center, the capital. Galilee is a village on the periphery, on the margins. So Jesus here is proclaiming faith in a God of the margins. More significantly, because it's on the margins, there's quite a concentration of Gentiles that live here. The scripture even says, Galilee, land of the Gentiles. And so there's a, a, strong, a strong story of radical inclusivity at the start of Jesus' mission. So from these margins, Galilee of the Gentiles, Jesus comes and interrupts people's lives. His message is simply that the darkness is not all there is. Yes, John is in prison because of Herod. Yes, there is corruption, there is injustice, and there is the soul-destroying depression from surviving in oppressed conditions. But there is another kingdom. There is another reality. 
if we have courage to turn around and go in another direction, we will find an alternative. This alternative is what Jesus calls the kingdom of God. And it's closer than we think. It is at hand, it is within, it is God's presence that is everywhere. So Jesus interrupts the well-ordered lives of Andrew, Simon, James, and John, and certainly their father Zebedee. The image that haunts me from this text is of John and James following Jesus into the sunset, this man that they seem to have never met, and he's holding the family business. <laughs> he's stuck holding the nets. The nets. I'd love to have been a fly on the wall in their homes when the four of them race into the sunset. These men were needed at home. They were fathers. They were sons. They were business owners. Jesus interrupts their lives and says, follow me. And so they leave successful businesses. They leave families. They leave homes. They leave friends. They leave all that is familiar to fish for people. Jesus walks along the Sea of Galilee. And always in Scripture, it's a symbol for change. It's a symbol for conversion. Andrew, Peter, James, and John are called to repent for the kingdom of heaven. God's presence is close. It is everywhere. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven has come near. I wonder what that means. So Matthew is writing to a Jewish audience who do not use the word God directly. So if you're speaking to a Jew Jewish audience and you want to mention anything to do with God, you say something like upwards, heaven, beyond, to symbolize God. There's a hesitancy to to name God because of their culture. It's a bit like that in Zulu, really. The word per Zulu means clouds, it means sky, it means rain, it means God, it means... <laughs> the word heaven means God. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near, it is close. If these statements are understood, then the entire gospel is understood. But if these statements are misinterpreted, the entire gospel is misinterpreted. So let's talk about what the kingdom of God is not. The kingdom of God is not the institutional church. Gasp. Recover? <laughs> kingdom of God is not the institutional church. The kingdom of God is also not that heavenly place we go to when we die. The kingdom of God is the presence of God. And it's everywhere all the time. Available here, now, and for always. What does the word repent mean? Some people say turn around. Some people say change your mind, change your heart, return. Yes, uh, there's a Jewish word, tekuva or something, return. So the Gospels are written in Greek and they rely heavily on Greek philosophy. And so the word metanoia, has a deeper meaning than change your mind or change your heart. According to Platonic philosophy, reality is understood as happening in four levels. There's the level of the body. There's the level of the individual soul. There's thirdly the level of the collective soul, which is called the well, in Australia, you pronounce it naus. The rest of the world says noose, but whatever, naus. <laughs> so the third level is naus, N-O-U-S. 
And then the fourth and final level is the deepest level of reality in Platonic terms, truth, or one, in our terms, God. So individual body, individual soul, collective soul, nous, and God. So when we are called to repent, metanoia, we are asked to go beyond the nous, in the same way that metaphysics goes beyond physics. The meta-narrative is the narrative, the overarching narrative. Metanoia means to go beyond the nous. So moving to that deeper reality, that is beyond understanding yourself at the level of just your body, that is beyond understanding yourself at the level of soul, that is beyond understanding yourself at the level of the collective soul, go beyond the collective soul to the, the one, to the God. So in other words, be in God because God is already in you. That's what the word repent means. We go beyond the noose to be in God. To be in God, to go beyond the noose, I think, is like that fish that is caught and taken out of the water. I suggest that the metaphor of the fish caught by anglers is perhaps our most helpful image today. To repent, metanoia, is as if we are that proverbial fish taken out of water, writhing in a new reality, perhaps even gasping for breath. Have you heard the expression, like a fish out of water? I suggest that much of discipleship is like being a fish out of water. Because you are literally transformed from one way of being to a totally other way of being. To be a disciple is utter, utter transformation. And it involves death. It is death for the fish to be moved from one reality to another reality. And that's symbolized in the text when our four disciples leave everything. They sacrifice business, family, relationships. They sacrifice their whole reality. One way of being is totally gone. And another way of being, one that you could never anticipated, has begun. The point I want to make is that discipleship is not a lifestyle choice. It is total and utter transformation. To continue the fish metaphor, to be fished is not leaving one coral castle, if you're a fish, leaving that behind to live perhaps in the Great Barrier Reef because the water's warmer. That's a lifestyle change. If you are fished, you are taken out of one reality into another, metanoia. You are changed. The life you knew is gone, and the life you could never imagine has begun. And so, yes, we are fished. We are lured. We are hooked. We are caught. And we give up everything for God's kingdom, for that is what it means to be fished. We come now to our time of prayer. Great Creator Spirit, grant to Christians everywhere the spirit of adoration. Lord of glory, Hear our prayer. the infant Christ received gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh. Creator God, accept the offering of our hearts and minds at the beginning of this year. 
Lord of glory, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord God with us. Grant an abundance of peace to your world. Lord of glory, the Holy Family lived in exile and in the shadow of death. Father, Mother God, look in mercy on all who are poor and powerless and all who suffer. Lord of glory, your son shared the life of his home and family at Nazareth. Creator God, protect in your love our neighbours, our families and this community of which we are part. Lord of glory, Father, Mother God, we rejoice in our fellowship with the shepherds, the angels, the magi, Mary, Joseph, and all the faithful departed. In your unfailing love for us and for all people, hear and answer our prayers through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us open our hearts to God in confession. When we dishonour your creation and look away from you, our creator, seeking other sources of life and hope, O oh God, have mercy. When we block the flow of your grace, drawing refreshment from the wells that leave us thirsty, O oh Christ, have mercy. When we fall short of your love for the world, failing to love you with all that we are, and turning our backs on our neighbours, O oh God, have mercy. Have Call us again as your children to return to you through the abundance of your grace along the liberating highway of hope. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. We love because God first loved us, Hear Christ's words of abundant grace and drink deep from the well of this hope. You are we are loved, we are forgiven, we are free. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the sharing of peace. Christ stands before you and peace is in his mind. Christ stands before you and love is in his eyes. Christ stands before you and strength is in his hands. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Peace be with 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 you.
thanks to the Lord, for God is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. All your works praise you, O Lord. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we, who share his body, live his risen life. We, who drink his cup, bring life to others. We, whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. <laughs> 